The short-lived National Front government led by VP Singh was marked by contradictions from the very start. It was a curious mix of leaders representing leftist, centrist and right-wing political views and they were often at odds with each other. Singh was surrounded by people guided by identity politics based on caste, religion and region. Sworn political enemies, the right-wing Bharatiya Janata Party or BJP and the left parties or communists became partners in a government at the centre for the very first time since independence. But let's return to how Singh found himself in the Prime Minister's chair in the first place. It was his popularity following his campaign against corruption in the Beaufort's gun deal that made VP Singh a rallying point for parties opposed to his predecessor, Rajiv Gandhi. But running a government with so much conflict was a huge risk. Singh lurched from one crisis to another until his government collapsed in just 11 months. In fact, his troubles began the very day he was elected Prime Minister by his party, the Janta Dal. Political intrigue, drama, treachery and the blind ambition of party leaders marked the process of his election. Singh's arch-rival Chandrasekhar made desperate last-minute attempts to sabotage his selection as Prime Minister. To outwit Chandrasekhar, a plan was hatched where Haryana leader Devi Lal was offered the post. Chandrasekhar supported the plan, but Devi Lal declined the offer. Instead, he suggested Singh's name. On the 2nd of December 1989, VP Singh was sworn in as Prime Minister at the head of a minority government. Devi Lal was appointed Deputy Prime Minister. Soon after Singh took office, he faced his first trial by fire. On the 8th of December, Kashmiri militants kidnapped Rubaya Saeed in Srinagar. She was the daughter of Union Home Minister Mufti Mohammad Saeed and a medical student. The militants demanded the release of five jailed colleagues in return for Rubaya's freedom. The government agreed and Rubaya was set free on the 13th of December, but the episode led to turmoil and instability in Jammu and Kashmir, which many believe contributed to the rise of militancy in the valley. In July-August 1990, Singh was confronted with a crisis that led to his fall. Differences within the Janta Dal involving Devi Lal had forced Singh to sack him from the cabinet. To hit back, Devi Lal called a rally of farmers in New Delhi. Devi Lal was a leader of the Jats, a powerful agricultural caste in Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan. He was a protégé of Charan Singh, a farmer's leader who had stitched together a coalition of backward castes against the Congress in UP and Bihar in the 1960s and 70s. Of the 143 Janata Dal members of parliament, 54 were from UP and 32 from Bihar. A majority of them belonged to the other backward castes or OBCs. Heading the government in UP and Bihar, Mulayam Singh Yadav and Lalu Prasad Yadav had emerged as powerful OBC leaders. Devi Lal could have rocked the Janta Dal boat if the OBC leaders joined him. At this point, Singh fished out the Mandal Commission report. It had been gathering dust for a long time, but he pulled it out to checkmate Devi Lal and win over the OBC leaders. The Mandal Commission had been constituted by the Murarji Desai-led government in 1979 to determine reservations for the socially and educationally backward classes. Economically, socially and educationally advanced upper castes pointed out that the quota system would be the end of meritocracy and they opposed it tooth and nail. So in August 1990, when Singh said he would implement the recommendations of the Mandal Commission, he drew loud protests from upper castes. The agitation took a violent turn when a Delhi University student, Rajiv Goswami, set himself on fire. Instances of self-immolation by students were reported from several cities in North India. There were also clashes between the upper castes and OBCs and incidents of police firing on protesters in which dozens lost their lives. There was another consequence of Singh's decision to implement the Mandal report. 
The BJP felt reservations would divide Hindu society, which it was trying to unite on the Ram Janbhumi Babri Masjid issue to derive political mileage. BJP President L.K. Advani responded by launching a Rath Yatra from Somnath in Gujarat on the 25th of September. The Yatra was to end in Ayodhya on the 30th of October and was to be followed by Kar Seva or symbolic construction of the Ram Temple. The Rath Yatra travelled 10,000 kilometres through eight states and stirred up religious sentiments, leaving a trail of communal riots in cities across Gujarat, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh. On the 23rd of October, Adwani was arrested in Bihar by Lalu Prasad Yadav and an angry BJP withdrew its support to the VP Singh government. However, thousands of VHP volunteers had already reached Ayodhya for the Kar Seva and attempted to march to the Babri Masjid. Mulayam Singh Yadav ordered the police to fire to prevent the Kar Sevaks from damaging the mosque. Over two dozen people were killed in the firing. On the 7th of November 1990, VP Singh resigned as Prime Minister after he lost a vote of confidence in Parliament. Two days before that, the Janata Dal had split with 54 MPs joining Chandra Shekhar. VP Singh left a nation fractured and wounded by caste and religious violence. <laughs>